The secret is real. Really real. At least that is the site name for the Spring Break 2018 event. Looks like Overkill actually did it and proved me wrong, which is great since now we get seven days of content and there's certainly a lot to talk about. The theme of this event is conspiracy theories. And hey, would you look at that? The site is currently being narrated by an anonymous person who goes by skepticguy underscore 96 or guy skepticson on the YouTubes. Or maybe I'm skepticguy underscore 96. Now, I've already got a ton of information I've been collecting since the last Bane Theory, and certainly the next six days will give us even more to work with. So for now, let's just take it day by day. So what was today? Well, we got a heist. Ah, but first we have to backpedal a tad. Uh, you see, shortly after my Bane Theory video, which I highly recommend watching to get caught up with this whole situation, the Kataru fabricated evidence suggesting the elephant was money laundering and gave this to Commissioner Garrett so the FBI could legally raid his office and Garrett could retrieve the item they want. The Kataru are planning on trading Bane for this item so both parties are happy. Except for us, so fuck Garrett and fuck Kataru. Break and Fed is a stealth only mission, sorry Jabes. Set on the second floor of our favourite FBI office, you know, the one we shot up and stole a bunch of data on the original rat? Well, ain't it nice that this is the setting for the next big arc. The heist takes place one hour before Garrett is set to meet and trade this item with Kataru. So we have to sneak in and steal it. You should go watch Connor Shaw's video for a detailed breakdown of, on individual objectives within the heist. I feel it unnecessary for me to repeat it here. But what is it though? Well, it's another motherfucking Illuminati bugs! Uh, but this time owned by the elephant and has a different symbol on it. What is this symbol? Oh, wow, that's gonna take a lot of explaining and I'll try to keep it brief. So back in March, a new challenger approached and he went by the name of Wordsmith and he declared himself the new rider of Payday 2 as of late 2017. He was responsible for the events of Reservoir Dogs and Brooklyn Bank, as well as the writing of the character Duke and all those emails and puzzles. You most likely know all that, but what you don't know is that Wordsmith updates his profile picture very often and has puzzles within them. But the main theme of it is that he has been using imagery from Robert Flood. If you've ever watched Neon Genesis Evangelion or Full Metal Alchemist, you've seen Flood's work before. Basically, this symbol is from his, oh god, I'm gonna fucking butcher this, Ubiquitous Cosmic Book, and is figure number two in his Macron... Macrosnum diagram, <laughs> uh, referred to as Let There Be Light. The guys over in the Steam Films have been a huge help with this, except for the pronunciation. <laughs> uh, Flood lived in the 16th and 17th centuries, and all of his stuff is in Latin, so I'm not exactly the best person to uncover the meaning behind it, but maybe in the future. Hey, remember that Kataro logo I made for Bane Theory 2? Well, that wasn't just a random logo. It's actually one of Flood's diagrams called the Heil Triangle, and it was the first image used by Wordsmith. Maybe I'll talk about this a bit more in tomorrow's video, but I should talk about the other things from today. Chains and Duke got some new voice lines in the safe house. Duke's got one that explains a lot about Kataro's origins. A few thousand years ago, three great kings got together, decided to rule the world, and made a pact. They called themselves Kataru, which kind of translates as alliance. Illuminati, Freemasons, enthusiastic amateurs in comparison. Legends say they acquired a magical artifact of some kind, if you believe in that sort of thing. And somehow, they seem to be behind all this. Hey, dude, what's the latest on the Sumerian shit? Then there's also this one from Chains. So where the fuck is Vlad in all this, man? Dude's been quiet for like months. Keep thinking about all that Seattle shit he was on about. Might be something to it. Maybe not. Is that... Is that a motherfucking Bane Theory oh, reference? Shit. Well, maybe. They could just be simply acknowledging that loose thread since I brought it up. Or it could have some actual weight behind it. Maybe time will tell. Apart from that, we got a flashlight melee that actually works, but not so much in VR, since to use it correctly inverts the trackpad locomotion. Oh my god, okay. What the hell? 
as well as night vision mask that also has actual night vision built into it, which is kind of useless and hurts my poor little eyes in VR. Maybe I should take a page from one of my old videos. Want to do some achievements? Hell yeah. Day one comes with eight difficulty achievements, as well as three do a thing achievements. Staple relationship. Find the red stapler and return it to the poor soul who works in this office space. Stalker. Keep Garrett highlighted for the entire duration from when he leaves his office until you open the safe. This one's tricky by yourself. Basically just bring a bunch of trip mines or friends. And a moment of silence. Without alerting or killing any guards on overkill or above, get Garrett to visit the restroom. To do this, you need to get Garrett to leave his room four times, which requires you to be patient. Very patient. You have to do the email objective, the phone call objective, the light switch objective, and finally the food objective. After he eats the food, he runs off to the bathroom. The hardest part of this is not getting alerted, since you basically have to pacifist run the entirety of the heist. And that'll just about do it for me for day one of spring break. By the time this video goes up, it'll most likely be day two. Hey, why don't you, I don't know, subscribe?